Hi, this is Jim at Remoted. And if you're managing access to private cloud resources at AWS or anywhere else for your team or for your company, and you have a remote workforce, you've probably dealt with this problem of dynamic public IP addresses and how can you manage uh, secure access to your uh, AWS environment uh, if the public IPs are changing all the time. So that's what we're gonna take a look at how to solve this problem. It's a real hassle for a lot of uh, admins with that responsibility. So over here on the left, I'm gonna show you some remote users. Imagine a remote workforce. They need to connect to private resources inside uh, the AWS environment here. And the problem is a lot of service providers these days are relying on CGNAT where there is no public IP address given to the user, right? These users all get a, a private IP address just like your cell phone uh, with your mobile carrier and the public IP that's used to communicate over the internet to AWS or any cloud, it could be Azure, Google, or anything else. Uh, those public IPs reside in the uh, ISP's uh, infrastructure. And at least in the case of geo, they're dynamic, they're changing all the time. So it's really difficult for the admin to maintain any kind of security groups based on IP address or IP allow lists as it's sometimes called, uh, virtually impossible if these are changing all the time. So that's what we're going to solve. And I'm going to eliminate that IP whitelist completely and maintain access based only on user identity, authenticated and authorized user identity-based access. So the way we're going to do it, we're going to use remote it. Uh, we're going to get rid of that allow list. What I'm gonna do is launch a EC2 right here in the public subnet. That's a T2 micro low cost uh, EC2 instance. I'm gonna launch that and install remote it right here on that, on that server. I'm gonna show you how to do it live. And then that server will become a jump host, if you will, a private, uh, jump host. It's completely invisible to the public internet. Uh, this security group on this instance will allow no ingress traffic whatsoever. So it's completely uh, invisible, no open port. And that's why you don't need an IP allow list or IP-based uh, security group allow rules because there's no traffic allowed whatsoever. Any connections here will be originated from inside. So I'll show you what I mean by that. But that's what we're gonna do in the live demonstration here. These are the steps I'm gonna follow. I'm gonna download the remote client for my Mac. I've already done that here, but we have Mac, Windows, and Linux clients. Then I'm gonna to go to AWS and launch that EC2 we talked about. Uh, I will completely close the security group, no ingress traffic whatsoever allowed. And so I don't need an IP allow list if I'm not allowing any traffic from the public internet uh, into, the, uh, into the instance, into the public uh, subnet there. So I'm gonna, then I'll configure remote it to act as a jump host and broker, if you will, connections for me to the private resources. So the databases, private servers, uh, Kubernetes clusters, whatever I need in that private subnet, I can get to through this remote server. And I'll then be able to share access. If you have a team or you have contractors or people coming and going, I will show you how to share access to uh, different people and revoke access when you need to. And then once you've set this up, it just takes a minute. Your remote workers and workforce can connect from anywhere. So let's go ahead and show you how it's done. I'm gonna first go to AWS. <clears throat> I'm gonna launch a, uh, an instance. I gave it a name, Remote AWS Demo. And we're going to choose uh, Linux 2 on a T2 micro. I'm gonna give it a key pair, okay? Now, I need to put this instance in the right place. 
So we'll do that. But first, I can disallow all traffic. No unsolicited inbound traffic whatsoever will be allowed uh, to connect to this server. So it's completely isolated, if you will, from the uh, public internet. And since that's the case, we don't need an IP allow list uh, to uh, protect it. So let's go ahead and place it where we want it. Remember, we want it in the public subnet of the database, or rather of the VPC that contains the private database I wanna to get to. So I'm just gonna choose the correct uh, VPC here where my database is. And let me get a subnet. That'll work. I'm gonna grant this a public IP, but it's completely shut off from the internet. So no traffic allowed. So I can do that. And there you have it. So let's go ahead and launch that. And there's one more step. This is the first time you're seeing remote it, but this is the remote it client for, uh, for my Mac here. What I'm gonna do, this is gonna be our, our console or our dashboard, if you will, for, for making connections, for adding users, removing users and so forth. But I'm just gonna quickly here add a device. So I'll pick AWS and then remote it is generating a one line command for me that I will use when I launch this server. And now this server will launch, execute this user data script here and register itself to my remote account where I can then configure it to make connections into the private subnet on my behalf to any of those databases or other resources and services. So let's take a look what's happening here. I'll turn off that filter and there it is pending. So we'll give that a moment to boot. And when it boots, again, it's going to register itself in my remote account and then be available so I could configure it. Just so you remember, uh, what we're doing here is launching this one, that instance. We, we completely closed down that security group. So we don't need to protect inbound traffic against uh, any IPs, any particular IPs. So these dynamic public IPs can change frequently all day long, doesn't matter. My users will still be able to connect. And then once that boots, I can configure it to give me on-demand, always available connections to any of these resources in the private subnet or, or in the public subnet, either one, uh, completely isolated from, from the internet. So let's say I have a MySQL database here I'm gonna show you how to, to connect to. All right, it says running. Okay, let's refresh. And it's initializing over here. This always, this is the long, longest step in the whole process. But here it is. It showed up in my account. There it is. So this is CE78. CE78, perfect. Oops. Now, if I click on that, I've already got SSH service because I'm the owner. I I, uh, uh, I launched it, I own it. I don't have to share that with anyone else. I can keep that to myself. But if I wanna add access to a database, all I need is that databases, uh, let's go look at our databases. Here's one I'll use. All I need is that endpoint name. I'm gonna copy that. You can see this is not publicly accessible. It's private IP only and accessible through that endpoint name. Then over here, I'm gonna say back in remote, all right, give me MySQL, give me a MySQL connection uh, on port 3306. And instead of localhost, I'm gonna put that endpoint name that I just copied, right? So let's save that off.
Okay, and as soon as that service starts up and comes online, we'll see this uh, ready to connect to or to use to make connections. There it is, it just came online. So what do I do? If a user needs to get to that database, they simply start the connection, which is gonna map that into my uh, localhost address space for me on port 33006. Right, and that's permanent. I can bookmark that in my MySQL client and use that forevermore. 127.001.33.006. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, our MySQL client. You can see I have connections right here simultaneously, Google Cloud, Azure, AWS, all with remote it into those different VPCs. I'm not, or those different cloud vendors. I'm not switching between VPNs or anything. But let's go ahead and uh, create that connection. I think it was 33006. Uh, these credentials are admin. Let's call this the AWS demo. Uh, YouTube. Okay. And now let's go ahead and test that connection. There you go. Successful. All righty. Now I can just, as any user can just launch their connection using the remote it generated IP and port. There's no IP allow list here whatsoever. It doesn't matter if the IP addresses change all day long. I can still use this connection. Uh, each user can, can use those connections. Okay. Now, Important thing is, okay, now that I've got that configured, uh, what about my users? All right, well, if I need to share access to that database and only that database to one of my colleagues, I just click share there and I can enter uh, a colleague's name or rather email address here. I don't have to grant them access to SSH. I can if I want, but I just want this user to be able to get to that database for as long as they need to do their job. So I'm going to go ahead and, and share that out. <clears throat> and now when this user logs into their remoted account, they will only see, they'll see that instance and they'll see that service. They won't see the SSH. Okay, so I have very fine, I have service level or resource level access controls here and very easy to do. So next time my colleague, Jamie, logs in, he will see this. When he clicks through, he'll only see the MySQL, okay? And there's a lot of tools here for managing an organization of people, role-based access and all the things you would expect. I'm not gonna show all of that in this video. Uh, when it's time to revoke access, let's say uh, Jamie's done with his job. I'm just going to uh, remove access for him. Nothing personal there, Jamie. Just going to remove access so uh, you're done with your job. So that's, that's really the overview of what we're doing here. Uh, you saw how easy it was to set up. And we have full written instructions I will link below in the video uh, description. And you can also just follow the steps in this video. Give it a try. What's <clears throat> What could go wrong? <laughs> so try that out. If you want more information about the security and, and how these connections are getting uh, created and all that, just reach out to me uh, directly and I'll be happy to you know, have that conversation. And again, I'm Jim at Remote It. That's my email address. And uh, you've probably got this link from hearing from me directly anyway. So thank you so much for your attention and give it a try. <laughs>